for whom the bell tolls, time marches on. Oh, Danny, Danny, Danny. I loved you once. Hey guys, it's Chris, and this will be my Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 5, The Bells Review. And I had to go back old school this time and come back on camera because we're going to be talking about this one for a while. Yes, they went full Mad Queen with Danny. She has now become the villain. She's become the very tyrant she was trying to depose of. So let's jump in, but first I want to thank my newest Patreons. Thank you to Lindy. Thank you to Garia. Thank you, Lauren Wagstaff. Thank you to the Senate for the upgrade. Really appreciate it, you guys. You guys keep this channel going through the long night. So anyway, let's jump right in and go over the rest of the episode, and then we'll jump to the dragon in the room, so to speak. So we start off with Varys betraying Danny. He is immediately trying to poison her. This is the problem I'm having, of course, with season eight so far, is everything is so rushed. They did things seemingly out of order. Now we will get into some hints that they gave us a long time ago as far as Danny becoming the Mad Queen. But my point being that the last couple episodes have been so rushed and not set up properly that it kind of pisses us off when it actually happens, although we never expected a happy ending. Why the hell was Varys already betraying her when at this point she had really not done anything wrong? And yes, I know she did do some things in the past. We'll get to that. I think all those were justified, but we'll get to that in just a second. So Varys bites the dust. They set it up last year. He did look her in the face and tell her not to do it. But then they made the battle plan and she agreed to stop when they rang the bells but he still didn't believe her because he thinks John's a better ruler for whatever reason, just because he has a dick, I suppose, I'm not really sure, and starts sending off letters pertaining to John and his true parentage, I believe, to all the different lords across the realm, so I don't know how many got out. I'm sure we will see a follow-up to that next week. But anyway, Danny does as she said she would do. She did burn him alive, and Tyrion says his goodbye, and even gives him the heads up that, look, it was me. I think he felt like he at least owed him that. And then we get the big setup, of course, is John and Danny talking on Dragonstone. She says she feels no love here, only fear. John says, I love you. They start making out just a bit, and he pulls back again. And then she backs up with a kind of little smirk on her face and says, eh, let it be fear then. So that's what kind of set up the ending of this episode, or I should say the remainder of this episode. So while I do understand what they were doing, again, I feel like it was rushed, but we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But it's like John, I'm not saying that John should have just slept with her to take one for the team, but essentially that's what D&D said in the behind the scenes episode, is when he pushed her back, that was kind of the final straw. But I do agree that John should have at least said, look, I love you, I'm just having a little problem with the ant thing. It's just a little weird for me. Just have a conversation as opposed to this awkward silence. And then we hear about Jamie being captured by the actual Northman he literally just left. And this is the problem I had with the whole thing, the way they set it up anyway, is that they were all on the same team the last few episodes. They literally fought the end of the world and won. They were all brought together by the same goal. They all agreed Cersei was batshit crazy, but they all went off on their separate missions to depose of her. Danny goes to, of course, attack her with her regular armies. John and them obviously agreed because she came up north and helped save the world. And Arya and the Hound go do their own thing as well. And they all meet up in the same place anyway. It's like, just have a long conversation and plan the whole damn thing together, as opposed to all this backstabbing or whatever for no apparent reason. And then I thought this was a great scene between Tyrion and Jaime. Jaime actually gets rescued by Tyrion, kind of repaying the favor from a previous season where Tyrion was, of course, locked up for the murder of Joffrey, and Jaime let him go. And, of course, that's when Tyrion killed his father. I thought this was a great scene with great dialogue, and they really knew in this moment they were not going to see each other again. So I thought this was a great little part of this otherwise chaotic episode. So he does let Jamie go. He doesn't make it into King's Landing, so he decides to sneak around to the outside, kind of where Arya apparently escaped previous seasons that Tyrion had let him know about, as well as leaving him a boat there. Then we had the scene that I didn't really like. I didn't mind the fight so much, but it was just odd that Euron washed up on the shore. Danny destroyed his whole fleet in 10 seconds like he should have a long time ago. Euron happens to wash up right there on that part of the beach. Him and Jamie have a fight. He does end up killing Euron, but Euron, of course, says while he's smiling, I'm the man who killed Jamie Lannister as Jamie was essentially mortally wounded. He was going to die anyway as he actually goes to find Cersei. I did not like Jamie's character arc, how they finished it off. He was supposed to be redeemed, and yet he turns and actually goes and wants to be with Cersei again because he loves her. I do understand trying to save their child, 
but he knows that she's a monster and he just can't accept the change and goes right back to her. We were all questioning that last week. Would he go back to try to talk to her one more time, to try to save her? Does he still actually love her after he finally professed his love for Brienne? And then all of a sudden he just goes back to Cersei just to die together. And let me say this really quickly. I don't have a problem with the Valonqar piece here. They never stated that in the show as far as the prophecy for Maggie the Frog. So I don't have a problem with them dying the way they did. And we did kind of predict this, that she would kind of find her humanity again at the very last moment when it's too late. And just for a second, just for a second, you kind of felt bad for her because she did want her child to live. I think she finally realized when her and Jamie went out together, like they always had planned to do, that she went a little too far and woke the dragon. And of course we get into Danny attacking the city. She wipes out the city in literally 10 minutes. All the damn scorpion bolts have no effect this time. She outsmarts them finally by going low in the water and taking out Euron's fleet. She burns all the scorpions around the walls of King's Landing, burns up the entire wall. The Golden Company lasted about 3.5 seconds. I think Cersei should definitely ask for a refund. But during this part, I was actually cheering because Danny was finally bringing fire and blood and winning this war. She took out all the walls of King's Landing, and when she came busting through the wall from the inside to open the gates for the Unsullied and John and the Northern Army, etc., I was really cheering. They get in, they ring the bells to surrender. Danny actually lands. The Lannister soldiers throw down their swords, and you're thinking, shit, I mean, she won. But then, of course, the bells told, and she looks up at the Red Keep, she gets triggered, and she takes off and starts killing everybody. And this was hard to watch. Another scene really quick I loved was the Hound and Arya. They go to kill Cersei and the Mountain respectively. And the Hound finally talks Arya into giving up her kill list. This is what didn't make sense from the previous episodes. She was all about the wolf pack, all about her family. Then she just takes off and plans on not going back to Winterfell. And the Hound finally snatched her up and said, look girl, look at me. Do you want to become like me? This is what vengeance gets you. You don't want to be like me and he sends her on her way, and she actually says, Sandor, which never happens. I thought that was a really cool moment. Thank you, and thanks him for all the things that he's taught her throughout the years. Not just that moment. This definitely goes back to season five when they spent a lot of time together on the road, so she realized that he was a good man, but of course he goes up, and we do get Clegane Bowl. Now, this was an epic showdown. Of course, we all wanted to see this. And as we kind of called, he had to go out by fire because he could not kill him whatsoever. It didn't matter where he stabbed him. The motherfucker just pulled the swords out. Hell, he got stabbed in the damn eye through the back of the head, through the brain, and still tried to pull it out. And that's when the hound said, fuck it, I'm going out like a champ, and linebackered his ass through the wall down into the burning fires below. So just like he had told Arya, when you go on a mission for vengeance, when that's all that you live for, that's how you die. It destroys you. So obviously I didn't like the Hound dying. I wish he would've went away a long time ago and said no to war after the whole long night thing. He should've went away then. It wasn't really his brother anymore. But at the same time, I did love this scene. And I gotta say, Kyber went out real quick. The Mountain had always listened to Kyber and Cersei, but as soon as he saw his brother, even though last year he didn't do a damn thing in the Dragon Pit, he snapped real quick, didn't listen at all, grabbed Kyber by the face, killed his ass like Jason Voorhees, and it was on. And then, of course, during the Battle of King's Landing, when Danny was burning the entire city, we got the perspective of Arya, it was really cool how she went from assassin to helping to save people, at least she tried, and then we get her perspective of all the horror and bloodshed and people being burned and the horrific atrocities of war. From Arya's perspective, as she runs through the streets, we thought she was going to get trampled, we thought she was going to get burned, and she probably should have, but then at the end we see her arise and she's the only survivor from the group she was trying to save, and we see the pale horse, which of course represents death. Very similar to Silver, Danny's first horse back when Cal Drogo gave it to her for a wedding gift. So now she's really pissed off, and everybody, of course, is at Danny. They don't understand what just happened. They're all trying to take it in, as we saw in the preview. Check out that video. I already have the episode six preview up and available. There's going to be more carnage in the finale of how to deal with Danny while she probably tries to justify her actions in some way. So overall, this episode was good in the sense of what it was supposed to do. It was done very well, it was shot very well. 
It was very hard to watch as they intended, but you could see everything clearly. Again, beautiful cinematography and all that kind of stuff. But the story is what gets us, and I do believe this was always going to happen. I do believe this is a major beat in the books as well. But I gotta address the whole Danny thing, because I do think even though they rushed it and it wasn't really set up properly for her to become Mad Queen so quickly, they did technically address this in several seasons over in Essos and growing up and learning things, etc. She did have little flashes of being kind of this Mad Queen Targaryen or whatever. She had these kind of fire and blood impulses, but she always got brought back. For example, she killed the Masters of Astapor, but of course it was an eye for an eye back then because they had crucified slaves and children for that matter. She had always had a tactical reason for doing some horrible things that she has done and was just never out of sheer madness. She did tell the people in Carl she will take what's hers with fire and blood, etc. So she's had those little moments, but she was always kind of reeled back in, especially when Tyrion got over there and they had always talked about checking her impulses. But then the problem is, is they really hammered it in our heads that she is not her father. You don't judge a daughter or a son for the crimes of their father. She even told John this last year when they met. She apologized for the atrocities of House Targaryen against his family. So they kind of hammered all this in. And then all of a sudden this season, after not getting enough love at Winterfell, John having an issue with her, not because he didn't love her, but because she is his aunt and he feels uncomfortable about it. And then of course losing Masande, etc. All of a sudden, she still makes the rational decision to plan this battle. So yes, Danny goes full Mad Queen and burns them all, literally. She killed, she massacred a million people or so in King's Landing. And what really kind of bothered me as well, I mean, this is very hard to watch. And if you notice, once you saw her face looking at the Red Keep where Cersei was and she lost her shit, you never saw her face again. You only saw the dragon and the dragon fire the fire and blood raining down on King's Landing. And we'll see if she tries to justify it next week before she dies because I don't think she can live after this. So while I do agree with everybody about how they set this up and how it was rushed and how it really seemed like almost an overnight thing, I will agree that they have set this up in the past and I will agree that we all should have expected this. We've all heard that saying, if you think this has a happy ending, you've not been paying attention. Hell, even Ramsey tells us that in the show is kind of a meta joke, I suppose. But a lot of us also predicted that Danny would actually win the crown and then decide not to keep the crown because of the way they set it up and always pulled her back and reined her in as far as her fire and blood mentality, that little spark of madness that all Targaryens seem to have. But let's be honest here. When it comes down to an actual shitty ending, I think we all just like happy endings. I think we would have all been fine and more, a little more satisfied, so to speak, if this thing would have ended with her beating Cersei, taking the crown, and then deciding to walk away saying she didn't want to become a tyrant or whatever, like she had been preaching the whole time, but they decided to go the very dark route where she becomes the very tyrant that she was trying to depose of in the first place. So let's be honest. We all knew this was coming, but when it actually came, we didn't really like it. Anyway, guys, overall, I think this was a great episode for what it was supposed to be. Again, I don't agree with how they set it up. It felt like very, very rushed, although a lot of time has apparently passed. And I will say, too, as well, what's going to happen with Danny's baby? They've been foreshadowing a baby for two seasons now, or longer, for that matter. What is going to happen if she comes up pregnant next week? Grey Worm even went batshit crazy. He was full of bloodlust as well. When he saw Danny take off and burn his shit again, that gave him permission, so to speak, to attack unarmed Lannister soldiers only because they were Lannisters. He has nothing to live for anymore. The Dothraki were back to their old selves like they were in Essos. Jon had to kill some of his own men. So it really showed the conflict there between what the hell was going on, what the reality of things were, and what the expectations were, even through Jon's eyes. So overall, it was done well. I really hated watching it though because it was just so sad and disappointing and heartbreaking and a lot of damn bitter I haven't seen anything sweet yet. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. What did you think of this episode? I know this is, again, a very controversial season and definitely a very controversial episode. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout-out to my executive Patreon Smokescreen producers. Also, be sure to tune in on Twitch on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock with Val from Because Geek, where we'll be discussing this episode again and taking your questions as well. And remember, next week as well, on Sunday after the show, after the series finale of Game of Thrones, we will be live as usual, but this time it will be another charity stream for St. Jude Children's Hospital at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time for the live stream. We won't be doing any super chats or anything like that. We'll be doing all charity questions 
there will be a link in that description where you can donate and we can read the questions from that actual donation page. So be sure to tune in next Sunday also at 1030 Eastern Standard Time as usual after Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 6, the series finale. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and share. And please be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.